what's up everybody to a very deja vu version of cinema royale uh what's up man <laughs> what's up <laughs> explain that why is it deja vu oh so we're actually coming to you on tuesday now uh we originally recorded the show on sunday uh something happened to the first half so here we are to re-record that first half so when you see a wardrobe change, or uh, it, it seems a little different about halfway through, maybe there's a little skittishness, I've got that's what's going two, on. two extra days of beard growth. There you go. Uh, so, so that's one thing. Uh, that's that's probably the biggest thing. Right. Two days of beard growth, probably about 10 extra pounds. Uh, <laughs> in two days? <laughs> just, just my look, probably. Is that 10 yeah. pounds in beard growth? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, so basically what we're doing is we're, we're – we're going back through um, uh, Disney's gigantic uh, presentation that they had last week, right? Uh, and we 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 kind of started off we 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 uh, we started off talking about uh, what we started off talking about Star Wars or Marvel? I don't remember. What we we started talking about Marvel. Um, well, actually, we we started talking about the whole thing in in general and and a couple other things here and there. But as far as the Disney announcement. It was Marvel, and there's just too much stuff dropping to leave any of this out. So what do we um, need to talk about right now? Marvel is what we need to talk about right now. So, um, you know, if you guys want to check out in detail for all this stuff and see the actual trailers, we've got some playing above us right now. But uh, uh, www.punchdrunkcritics.com is the website. Make sure to check that out. Um, and uh, as you'll see later in the show, there's 10 new Star Wars um, shows announced, and there's also 10 new Marvel uh, shows and properties announced, uh, and that's what we need to jump back into here. Um, yeah, it was a, it was just an absolutely insane day of announcements from Disney. Yeah, as they, as they set out to uh, make the, make the shareholders happy. Yeah, uh, after a, after a 2020 in which everybody's been down. Yeah. Uh, um, although I don't know how do how down Disney was. I mean, I, I know they had to keep their you know keep the parks closed for a while and. You know, there were no Marvel movies this year, so mm -hmm. I guess they were down somewhat. But I'm sure a lot of that was probably made up for by, by people subscribing to Disney+. Plus. I mean, and insane. Almost, almost this entire announcement that they had the other day was about Disney+. Plus. Yeah. There were a yeah. couple of other things that were big screen. Of course, the Patty Jenkins directing a Star Wars film, Rogue Squadron, that's big screen. Mm -hmm. stuff. But for the most part, Disney's announcements had to do with Disney+. Plus. And they right. said they said weeks ago that they were going to put their focus on on streaming, uh, and they weren't kidding. Uh, <laughs> so not even a little they bit. Weren't, they weren't kidding. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's talk about some of these Marvel announcements. Uh, yeah, I can't remember how we started off things before talking about Marvel, but uh, well, I mean, I think uh, you know the first thing we talked about was whether or not this was uh, you know a retaliation to uh, to Warner Brothers who put out their huge news um, just last week about unleashing their entire 2021 slate on um, HBO Max. And here's Disney Plus taking it out, throwing it on the table, and putting it all there. So the main thing that we got into was starting with the trailers. We got three trailers, uh, one of two of which were new, uh, one of which was mostly old footage in, in WandaVision. But we got trailers for Loki, uh, Winter Soldier, and uh, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and WandaVision. Um, we got all kinds of stuff. Uh, of these trailers, obviously my favorite um, had to be Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The, the the chemistry of Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan is just unmatched. It's it's so much fun. We saw, first saw it in Civil War, um, you know, as they're following Steve around as his two best buddies, old and new. Uh, and then when they're both fighting Spider-Man specifically, uh, it, it, you knew something special was there. Um, and then the end of end game, we see. Cap, past I, the I, I never picked up on that, by the way. Really, really? No. I never oh. picked up on the on those two becoming a thing. I, that didn't that didn't strike me with, with Captain America Civil mm. War. I mean, it was, there was it was really tiny moments. Like they're in the car. He's like, "Can you put your seat up?" Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. You know? I mean, those things are <laughs> yeah. those are fun moments. I mean, but did did I I I don't believe for a second that anybody was like. Yeah, these two should have their own series based on those couple of moments. I never thought that. And I don't know if I thought fun, series, fun. but I wanted to see them together. They're fun. I mean, yeah. they're they're natural to be together because of their connection to Captain America. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if it's beyond that. I was like, yeah, I want to see more of these guys all the time. I don't know about that. 
But I'm, I, but I'm, but but now that it's happening, I'm, I'm happy for it. Yeah, I want to see it. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of of Anthony Mackie's Falcon. I, mm. I this is pretty much the only thing I like Sebastian Stan in. Uh, weren't a big fan of the Covenant, were you? <laughs> or was it was that the, was it the Covenant? His 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 Warlock High School Warlock movie that he was in back in the day. Oh, man, you you might know that. <laughs> <laughs> but now that they're together, I mean, I, I like what the show looks like it's going to be, and yeah, um, it seems like it's going to be sort of a Captain America legacy series, and it, and, I, and I do think it's going to be the show that defines what it means to be Captain America, and mm-hmm. and I don't necessarily believe that anybody's going to be Captain America by the end of it. I I don't I don't yeah I'm not I'm not I'm not assured of that. Or at least I'm not as sure that's going to be Falcon or Winter Soldier. I, I think it could be somebody new. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I do feel like they're going to introduce other characters, like like Eli Bradley, Patriot, uh, could be in there of the Young Avengers. I, I feel like he's going to be introduced somehow. Because um, they're int- sure as hell introducing all the other freaking Young Avengers. Yeah. Else, so I figure he could be there. And I do feel like they'll bring in uh, the, the, the Black Captain America as well. Um I figured they'll find a way, whether it's through flashback or some other thing, they'll mm-hmm. find a way to bring him, to introduce him into the Marvel Universe somehow. Not, not Maybe not for the long term, but at least to, to have his story be a part of the history of Captain America. Um, yeah. I can see them doing. But the, sh- the series looks like a lot of fun. Um, I, I, it kind of looks like the natural, the natural continuation of Captain America, the Winter Soldier. It kind of looks like that. I, I imagine big global conspiracies, all yeah. sorts, of, all sorts of stuff going on in this, and I, I'm I'm down for all of that in the Marvel universe. Yeah, I mean, it really has that. You know, when when um, at the end of now, for God's sake, I can't remember if it's Civil War or Winter Soldier, or both. Um, at the end of one of those, uh, Falcon and Cap are going off on a mission together. He's like, well, you don't have to come with me. I want to, whatever, whatever. Uh, and it had a real Secret Avengers feel. And this this definitely, I'm with you on that. It feels like continuation. I also agree with the whole um, legacy of the mantle thing. Uh, you know, there was a big moment in Endgame, obviously the end, where um, Cap, Steve Rogers, hands off the shield um, to, uh, to Falcon to Sam Wilson, and he, he says, you know, you're a good man. And, you know, you have Bucky, who's the super soldier, and you have Sam, who's, who's a good man. And that's what Dr. Erskine said to Steve Rogers in the beginning, was like, I'm doing this not because you're the best soldier, but because you're the best man to do this. Um, and, and what that shield means, we know U.S. agent's going to be in it. Um, Wyatt Russell, Kurt Russell's son, who's been in a ton of stuff at this point, he'll be playing U.S. agent. We know that... Um, they're not the anti-patriots. I forget who they are, but we get shots of the the people that wear the the masks in the trailer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love that they're going back to the knife work um, that that Bucky has. I mean, some of the cool stuff in in Winter Soldier was him flipping that knife around, and you see hints of that. Um, but by far the coolest moment. So uh, so easily entertained. It's like me. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He flips the knife around, and I can't wait. <laughs> but it, it looks rad, man. He's just like you know, he's flipping it quick and cool. There's a really cool homage to uh, the beginning of, of Winter Soldier uh, when it shows uh, Sam and uh, Bucky on a plane, and Sam just kind of walks and, and jumps out of the uh, plane the same way Cap did at the beginning. But that leads to my favorite part of the trailer, and probably what's going to be my favorite part of the series, is Sam Wilson in that Falcon suit doing his thing. He's got that whole Independence Day, uh, Will Smith, Harry Connick Jr. fly through the valley thing going on. It just looks so amazing. Uh, the quality of the shows that they're putting... Disney Plus is putting on uh, is absolutely oh, yeah. astounding. They're 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 movies basically. Yeah, I they're, mean, they're, they're they're movies uh, stretched into into episodic and episodic TV. Um, I'm I'm there for all of it. Now the question is, does Falcon does he get Red Wing by the end of this show? By the I don't end know of that it, he ever does. Does, does he does he <coughs> does he have Red Wing flying flying alongside him? by the end of the series. I think in a way he already did, right? I mean, in um, in the beginning of Civil War, we see him and he shoots his little drone. The drone flies through the, um, through the, remember? Mm-hmm. That's, he's not going to get, he wants that. We want a bird. We want he's not going to get a real bird any more an than Luke Cage is going to wear, <laughs> you know. If he doesn't have an actual bird, then it sucks. I mean, come on. Yeah. 
Well, if they can, if anybody can do it, Kevin Feige can can figure out a way to get that in there. Yeah, so he's not going um, to have Rick Wayne Stafford. So that's fine. The other new trailer we got was Loki. Uh, we've known for a while it's going to be dealing with Tom. We knew since Endgame that Loki, this was going to be the entrance to Loki's show. That's confirmed at the very beginning of the trailer, where it recaps when he gets the cosmic cube and disappears. Um, but for those who aren't deep comic book fans, there's a whole lot of what the hell is going on. We get a look at Owen Wilson as Morbius B. Morbius, uh, who's an agent of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. So I, I liked what you said on take one of, of our run through of this show. Uh, and I don't want to miss it as you compared it to the Quantum Leap. And I get a feeling you're, you're spot on with that. Yeah, I, th- I see a Quantum Leap sliders sort of thing. Maybe sliders might be a better example of it, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, but yeah, it does look like he's going to be moving around through time and affecting uh, events and, and people along the way. And of course, this is Loki, so he's going to get into trouble and he's probably going to cause trouble mm-hmm. um, the whole way too. Um, very interesting to see the basically the, the time brokers involved in this as well. It, it seems like they're... Owen Wilson's character is a time broker. Um, mm-hmm. People who kind of watch over the, the multiple realities and um, uh, stuff like that in the Marvel universe. Uh, that seems like it's going to be. It seems like it's going to be a fun show. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a limited event series, so it won't last forever. Which leads me to wonder what happens to Loki after this. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, mm-hmm. I do feel like like we've mentioned before that Loki is a, is a member of the young Avengers in the Marvel universe, a younger version of Loki. Mm. I won't be surprised if something happens to him at the end of this, that makes him younger. Um, yeah. And has him joining the team. He won't, because he wouldn't be joining the team at this age, of course, that Tom Hiddleston age. Yeah. So I will not be surprised by that, but yeah, this show looks fun to me. Uh, not, it's yeah. not Loki is not my favorite character in MCU. Never, never has been. He's not my favorite character. Not, not one of my favorite characters in, in the comics either. But mm-hmm. uh, I love Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of him. And uh, this looks like a nifty little show. So yeah. I mean that's it, isn't it? Is Tom Hiddleston is is what everybody loves. Loki is a compelling character, yeah. But um, it's Tom Hiddleston that really brought him from a one note villain in, in Avengers into something that showed up in every place that he could. Um, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. It, it It's definitely... One of the things I like about these three shows is that they're so freaking different from one another. I mean, they couldn't oh, yeah. be more different. Uh, yeah. Even right down to Loki um, apparently being D.B. Cooper at the end of that trailer. Um, yeah. The next yeah. one was WandaVision, um, which, you know, we've had trailers for WandaVision before. Uh, it seems like it's going to be... a decade per episode maybe uh of their sitcom uh it kind of seems that way what what do you what's your take on is this universe in wanda's head or that wanda's in is this self-imposed or is she being put there because we see government agents we see things chipping through i always got the idea that it was you know she was so distraught with grief she kind of dissociated herself and put herself in some kind of weird place but this almost seems like that, it could be brought on somewhere i mean else. that could very well be the case Mm-hmm. But when I see Catherine Hahn's character there, and there's something obviously going on with her, mm-hmm. um, I think she's Agatha Harkness, uh, uh, who's one of those people who helped train uh, Wanda in her powers. She's also kind of manipulative and devious as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can see her possibly having something to do with this too. But she might be trapped there like like everybody else. She could be trapped there like like other people. She was yeah. trapped in there um, and not necessarily uh, causing it. So my gut tells me that this is that this is um, one. Most of this is of Wanda's construction. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, and there's even there's even a, a part where Catherine Hahn's character says, "Help us." You know. I mean, that could be you know misdirection, obviously, but you know, there's a lot of questions still there for as much as we've seen of this. Yeah, and the series is, looks like it's going to have a lot. I mean, it's going to have Monica Rambeau, so we're going to get to see her in there, and we're going to get to see Darcy, uh, Kat Dennings' character from Thor, come back, mm-hmm. which will be fun. I believe Randall Park's character from the Ant-Man movies is in this, too. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in this. Uh, we got to see the two – it looks like uh, Scar- uh, Scarlet Witch and Vision have children at one point, and uh, we will get to see if maybe they grow up to become Wiccan and Speed, who were, uh, again, two members of the Young Avengers mm-hmm. uh, right there. So, I mean, it's – there's – and look, this show has connections to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. 
Um, and Loki has ties to that movie as well. Um, and obviously Spider-Man 3 does too, because Benedict mm-hmm. Cumberbatch is in that. And we know all the sorts of weird shit going on with that movie, um, with all the people that are in that. All these things in the Marvel Universe, it looks like these next fa- this next phase or two are gonna, is almost entirely going to deal with alternate realms and multiple realities, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be very interesting. And it looks like Wanda- WandaVision is a key part of that, too. So this is the first Marvel TV series uh, for Disney+. Plus. Um, right. Yeah, since the other Marvel TV sucks. January, what, 11th is when we're getting uh, it? Yeah, it's January 15th or something like that. Yeah. And you, you, you've mentioned multiple times um, in pretty much each one of these something that's that's become obvious, and that's most of these, it's not the, the A plot, but at least the B or C plot of all these shows is finding a way to loop in the new Avengers. So that's obviously the way that they're going to go. One thing we didn't talk about last time, or at least didn't talk about at length, I think, is um, the What If trailer that we saw. We saw, I guess it was extended. It looked like the same one I saw before, but... Um, I, I can't decide where I'm at on what if. Like, I really like the idea of it. The, uh-huh. the animation looks really cool. Um, you know, so far we've seen, uh, let's see, what, what did we see? We saw Peggy Carter as Captain Britain instead of Captain America. What if she took the super soldiers here? And we saw zombies, obviously. That's a big one. Uh, one of the new ones from this trailer that I hadn't seen before, at least, was uh, an alternate timeline where <clears throat> it's T'Challa and not Star-Lord that's picked up by the Ravagers, um, by Yondu and the Ravagers. And that those segments in here cool were, were really cool, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm 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 interested in that show. I used to like the comic. Yeah. Um, back it's in a the fun day. departure, you know. Yeah, it, it is. And they they always come up with cool way the cool ways of doing stuff like mm-hmm. what if what if Black Panther had Molnir or something like that. And stuff like that, you know, was was always cool. Right. Um so yeah, I'm interested in seeing how they're going to do that, and I like the animation style of the show too. Right, it's it's kind of into the Spider Verse a little, isn't it? it? I mean, it's it's different, but in a way I can't put my finger on. Kind of. It also kind of looks like comic book pages, you know. So right. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I re- I really like it. Yep. And we got that that parting shot, like I said, of, of Marvel zombies, which has always been popular. It'd be it'd be fun to see that. Um, Let's see, what else do we got in the Marvel world from, from this? Um, Fantastic Four is finally confirmed and announced. and The I, biggest of the Marvel news. I yeah, the biggest. We should probably should have opened with it. And, and, and not to keep rehashing uh, take one of this, but you know we disagreed on that at first that that was the biggest news, but now that I've had some time to process it, I mean, no, no, I guess... No, we disagreed on whether Star Wars' Patty Jenkins was the biggest news. That was what we did. Oh, the Rogue Squadron thing, yeah. Right. Well, even so, I maybe I didnn't say it, but you were you were poo pooing the whole thing. I wasn't poo pooing like, it. I was just and saying. I was like, yo, you totally poo poo. I okay, I poo poo doo doo, but um, you know, with Fantastic Four, I guess I um I wasn't blown away by it because I kind of always just assumed, but but this was really the first confirmation or information or anything we had, right? Yeah, this is our first real confirmation. Of course, everybody's assumed that. The assumption is is easy that there, of course, Marvel is going to do a Fantastic Four movie right. or, or series at some point, and just like they're going to do, they're going to bring the X Men in at some point. We know that they will, mm-hmm. but had they said anything officially about it? No, they hadn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the first confirmation that they are doing Fantastic Four a movie, and they got John Watts who's going to direct it. John Watts, who's done the Spider Man movies, mm-hmm. uh, is he's going to do Spider Man three as well. Uh, this is going to be his next thing. As soon as he's done with that, he's going to jump right into Fantastic Four. I kind of feel bad for Peyton Reed. Uh, Peyton Reed, the guy who does the Ant-Man movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third one of that one is going to be called Quantum Mania. We know that now. Um, so you got that one's going to be all about the quantum room, I guess. Uh, but Peyton Reed has been lobbying for Fantastic Four for years. So yeah. I kind of feel bad that, he's not gonna, that they're not going to give him uh, the Fantastic Four film. Uh, but I'm assuming that they're going to keep Peyton Reed around. And he'll they'll give him something else. So I'm I'm sure it'll be okay. They'll probably give him X Men as a, as like a trade off or something. But we'll see. I I can't imagine for the filmmakers. I mean, obviously it's never been done by Marvel MCU before by with Kevin Feige uh, Feige above it. Um, but it just it seems like such a cursed property at this point. You know, uh, Josh Trank and who did the original 2000? And now I like story. We, Tim we, Story did the, uh, the, the the two that were 
in the 2000s. Uh, of course, there, there's the infamous Roger Corman one that never got released from yeah years ago. There's a really good uh, documentary on that, by the way, though, about how nobody knew it was never meant to be released that was making it. It's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was Tim Story who did those early uh, uh, Fantastic Four films, which I don't, I personally don't think are that bad. Um, right. I think they're they're perfectly fine for pre Marvel Studios superhero movies. They did fairly okay at the box office. Um, right. Not great, but it did all right. The second one is clearly better, The Rise of Silver Surfer, because Silver Surfer's awesome, and he looked great. Um, actually, he looked looked, you know, looked like he was made of chrome. He looked awesome. Yeah, uh, the Doom was shit, but you know whatever. Um, but yeah, and, and Chris Evans was 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 really a lot of fun as Human Torch. Ian Griffith is boring as hell as 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 Reed Richards and Jessica Alba is just miscast as Susan Storm. Let's just be honest. Yeah, but um, but for the most part, those movies are okay, man. They're they're not as awful as people say. It's just people like to if you're gonna compare them to the Marvel Studios movies. And dream about what a Marvel Studios version of Fantastic Four would look like, then yeah, they don't. Then they're not going to compare. Right. Compare. It's it's. So I it's guarantee you, I'd now. rather watch those movies than watch that 2015 one by Josh Trank. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want to watch that thing again. I, in fact, I haven't. I haven't seen it since that that time we saw um, it in the theater. Yeah. I have not seen it. I, whatever, whenever that screening was of that, that's the last time I saw that movie. <laughs> I saw no reason to see that movie again. Here, I can't here's... think of any good reason to watch it. And you know what's funny? I don't see it anywhere. It's not like uh, other superhero movies that get played on like TV mm -hmm. or TV. It's not on TBS every Saturday. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen it anywhere. Like I yeah. haven't seen it on HBO or TNT or, or FX or nothing. It's just not there. Everybody's and, just and and, and, look, and FX is and FX was a Fox network. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even put it on there. Yep. They they play the X Men movies all the time on there. They played the original they, Fantastic Four all the time on there, especially when um when their never, boy was still doing Nip Tuck. They never played that <laughs> Josh Trank Fantastic. No, movie. I think everybody just wants to forget that one. But there there is a, a big question that I have. I mean, obviously we didn't get any real real details other than uh who who was uh running the the show, but um. Can you make a, a Fantastic Four movie without Doctor Doom? If so, who's your bad guy? And, it, I mean, is it okay to introduce somebody Doctor Doom level? Because the thing that they never did in these other movies, Doctor Doom always, they made him seem very Fantastic Four, but he is a universe-level character, universe-level threat, almost, um, depending on which series of comics you're reading. And he seems much more important to the universe at large than just the Fantastic Four, but he hasn't gotten that yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The problem is, do you want to see any other Fantastic Four villains other than Doctor Doom? I, I, mean, I, I can't think of any. <laughs> I mean, they have others. It's just Doctor Doom is the only one anybody cares about. Yeah. I mean, unless you're going to put them up against Galactus, which they very not a well cloud. might do. <laughs> right, and not a cloud. Which they would very, very well might do, but I doubt they would do it in the first movie. No, um, especially so, with everything yeah, else going on. Galactus is something you build to. You don't just put him out there. Yeah, but um, but I don't I don't know if anybody wants to see the Fantastic Four without Doctor Doom. That's that's the issue. Yeah, that's, I just so. I want to see some Doom bots. I want to see Latveria. I want to see all this stuff. I really want them to do Doom. Right. I was all fully on board when people were kicking around the idea of a Doom movie. Uh, you know, introducing Doom in his own movie. Uh, you know, I think well, that's that, the thing that Noah Hawley was going to do. Right. Noah Who Hawley is... was going to do a, a Doctor Doom movie back when, back for Fox. Mm -hmm. But then the whole, you know, Disney murder started happening and all those projects kind of were left in limbo. And then after the, the, the deal went through, he was talking to them about about the Fantastic Four movie and it just didn't seem like it was going to go anywhere. But then again, it didn't seem like his Alien TV series was going to go anywhere either. And that's been picked up by Disney. So that's going to happen. Right, uh, that was part of the same announcement day, right? Part of the yeah, same package of announcement. It's no Holly, so I don't. Oh, 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 ultimately, I don't give a shit about it. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we'll, but uh, they might still circle around and do this fantastic this Doctor Doom uh, solo project at some point. I guess it's it's really going to depend on how the fantastic Fantastic Four received. I'm gonna guess. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I'm, uh, there's, there's a ton to go into there and we'll, we'll probably have to save that for later because there's a bunch of other stuff. I mean, just on Thor, got, uh, Love and Thunder, we, we got confirmation that Christian Bale is playing Gore the God Butcher and Lady Sif is coming back. Who is not happy? Hey, I'm happy. Thank God she wasn't in Ragnarok because if she had gotten killed, I'd be upset. She would have died if she was in Thor Ragnarok, so I'm glad she wasn't there. Right. She was off doing that show Blind Spot, I guess, which I never watched. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, anytime there's more Jamie Alexander, I'm down for it. So, so there's, there's Christian Bale's playing Gore the God Butcher, who's kind of like a Drax-style character, right? Like his, his, his family was killed by gods, and now he's looking for revenge? It's something like that, yeah. He's, he's got a, a weapon that's powerful enough to kill gods. Uh, he has a... He, he, Without going too deep into his whole history, but he's a fairly recent character. Mm -hmm. His family was killed. He um, decides that gods can't exist because they don't help people. Uh, he gets ostracized by his clan because of that. Um, mm. Then he discovers that gods do exist, and he decides to set out to kill them. Um, he gains As a weapon. Does. He gains a weapon that can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets it from the Lord of the Symbiotes. Uh, so it's powerful enough to kill anybody, and uh, he's a really he's a badass character. He is somebody that's going to be really tough, which is interesting. Um, I mean, he's he's coming at a time I guess it makes sense because mm -hmm. I do believe his storyline in the comics involved the Mighty Thor, which is the Natalie Portman Jane Foster version of Thor. Right. I do believe there she's involved in that that storyline as well. So. I guess it makes sense. It just seems like with all these Marvel movies, there's a whole lot of stuff going on with each of them. Yeah. And it, which makes me wonder how much, like, like what the true storyline of some of these things are. Well, Spider-Man, man. I mean, it, every, in, the, in the two days since we originally tried to record this episode, we now uh, hear that, uh, you know, not just Alfred Molina and Jamie Foxx and, you know, obviously all the Peter Parkers, but now we're hearing that Willem Dafoe is, is in talks to hey. sign on. Yeah, I mean, all this. I mean, it's you, a rumor. All it, it's a testament to this to the skill of what MCU has done so far that everybody is not having a collective panic attack. Like, oh, they're gonna screw it up because prior to the MCU, anytime you had multiple villains in a movie, it was always a bad sign. Um, but speaking of multiples, there are multiple shows coming out that we haven't talked about yet. Um, uh, Riri Williams is somebody that people have talked about for a yeah. long time. Even prior to uh, Tony Stark's demise in Endgame, uh, Ironheart is one of the shows that's coming up, so we, we will get Riri Williams. Um, yeah. Maybe like Dominique Thorne is actors I don't know. Mm -hmm. Riri Williams is a character people people really love. She's kind of like in that wave of characters, like sort of like with uh, Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this new wave of, of characters that are a little bit more culturally diverse. Right. Uh, uh, Riri's an African American girl, a genius, uh, who creates a suit of armor that's that rivals Tony Stark's. So, um, yeah. Uh, yep. I believe she was part. She was a part of Young Avengers too. Um, actually, so I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. But yeah, people are really excited about about that show, and and, and I'm one of them too. Yeah, I mean that looks. And speaking of uh, of things that to be excited about, and suits of armor, Armor Wars. Don Cheadle's finally get his chance to step up to the the starring role um, Can't in, our, it's in a War Machine series. It's, I know it's, it doesn't make any sense to me that that character, who has been such a secondary character, and will, and will forever be a secondary character, um, I just I just I, I just don't I, I it just doesn't make sense to me that somebody was like, hey, let's do a show with War Machine in it. I, 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 mean, I have I to know. imagine that. I have to imagine that that War Machine's not going to be the lead. I, I have to imagine there's something else going on here. Right. That he's probably just the biggest person attached to it right now. Um, well, I, I'm saying this. I'm saying you have a you have a, a possibility for a great show there for a number of reasons. Number one, you've got uh, Rhodey who's lost his best friend, and now the premise of the show obviously is that Tony's uh, armor gets in the wrong hands. And uh, Rhodey has to straighten that out. So he's worried about his friend's legacy. He's got all that uh, laying on him. And then you have the awesome possibility of bringing back uh, Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. Um, you know, and then everything with the military industrial complex, how much money we're spending on defense. I mean, there's a lot of, of real world commentary that could happen there as well. 
Um, That's what I want. I want. Yeah. I want Justin Hammer back. Oh, so bad. I want Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. I, I need that to happen. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, that's the one thing that we we didn't get enough of was uh, Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer. He was in and out in Iron Man two. He's unceremoniously brought off to jail at the end of it, uh, and never mentioned again. Um, so he was in All Hail the King. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah, you didn't. You you brought that up uh, last time around. Well, he was in the one shot. All Hail the King with a with a, with a gay lover. So yeah, there you go. May, may or may not be consensual. I'm not sure. Um, she Hulk Titania. I need, re- I need to rewatch Iron Man three. It seems like it's been a long time since I've watched that one. I, you know, I, I need to watch All Hail the King after that too. I I may I haven't seen it in forever either. But Iron Man two always blew my mind. That it's the one it's that your favorite hate. Iron Man, right? I I, I I like it a lot. I mean, Iron Man one is my favorite, but Iron Man two I think is awesome. I I'm a big War Machine fan though, so I mean <laughs> that might be why. Um, plus you get drunk Tony, uh, you get the introduction of Natasha Romanoff. I mean, come on, that hallway scene with her, when she's got the curly red hair too. Oh, um, I, I remember it well, yeah. Uh, um, and then, uh, so this is, we're getting paid off on a lot of things that people thought were coming up. Um, ever since Captain Marvel, uh, everybody has been saying Secret Invasion, uh, especially after that post credit scene in, uh, I think it was Spider-Man Far From Home, right? Um, that Secret Invasion was on its way, which Secret Invasion, for those of you who don't know, the Skrulls, who we now know are good guys, uh, or possibly good guys. Some of them are. Now, they're not all. They're not a monolith. I mean, there are good Skrulls and bad Skrulls. No, Travis, people are one way. Groups of people are one way. They can't be different ways. I know. That's where the phrase, that's where, I know, that's where the phrase <laughs> white devil comes from. Sequence uh, <laughs> 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 Ocha! <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, there, there's this good ones and bad ones. It seems like they're going to be hunting down the bad ones. Right. In, uh, Secret Invasion. Uh, it's Sam Jack, it's Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury, and Ben Mendelsohn as Talos. Amazing. I, 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 this is by far the show I'm most excited about. Amazing. We live in those, a world where we have a, sh- a Marvel show with those two in it. It's those just... two together in the show is, go- is going to be so much goddamn fun. Yeah. I mean, I, it's an embarrassment of riches that we have now. I mean, really it is. I did things... If, if you had told me, I mean, I'm I'm still trying to get over the fact that we have a, a legit good Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and now you're telling me we're get Secret Invasion, uh, with with it's just amazing. Um, yeah. Possibly, you know, we disagree on one thing, though, Travis. I'll be honest. You know, you said Fantastic Four was the biggest news. I think obviously the biggest news of the announcement was that we are getting an I Am Groot uh, series of shorts uh, featuring everybody's favorite Baby Groot. Um, not really. That's just a a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy news, though. We know that 2023 we're getting Volume Three. Uh, next year in 2022 we're getting just prior to the release of Volume Three we're getting Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas Special, which seems so ridiculous. But the more I think about it, I mean, how amazing is it to think about Peter Quill sitting around explaining to Drax and Mantis about the different customs of Christmas on Earth? Um, I mean, I could probably watch that for an hour. Uh, just, just getting, get, getting all the shtick that they put through rocket, making fun of it the whole time, all while the, while they're decorating Groot as a Christmas tree. It's going to be amazing. Um, sounds awful. <laughs> so there's, sounds, a, it sounds awful, but you know what? It, it'll probably be fun. So. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fun. You know, stuff. Um, also I, I started to mention, but then forgot to finish Tatiana Maslany, um, is, is officially confirmed as Jennifer Walters, she Hulk, um, we're getting uh, Tim Roth back. We're, we're finally getting some of these characters from the Edward Norton uh, Hulk that we yeah, haven't there's, seen. Yeah, there's a lot of people. A lot of people waiting around for that Tim Roth return. You know, I mean, was, people are like, man, I can't. Oh, where's the abomination been at? Like, dude, where's he at? Like, people you were, joke, were, but I've heard that quite a bit. And then you know, everybody's waiting you on Red Hulk too. Not. You I have heard it. Not. It is you on the buzz on the you internet. Yeah, no. go to www.comic.com. No, no, no. You'll see. White devil, stop lying. There's no, there's nobody out there clamoring for Tim Roth. Or, uh, no, there, 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 there seriously <laughs> isn't. But, but Abomination was a cool character. Um, I didn't, he wasn't. I just said you didn't hear nobody wondering where he's at. <laughs> but what about the leader? Everybody's been asking about the leader lately. I mean, that's even Kathleen Kennedy said, "What are we going to do with the leader?" You know, we teased him at the end. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, um, Mark Mark Ruffalo is definitely coming back. So he's going to be in the show. Yeah. I don't know how long, 
but uh, he is going to be back as the Hulk. And I mean, honestly, can can William Hurt's Thunderbolt Ross be far behind? Honestly, no, I mean, no, no. He's no he's way. he's one of the few from that movie, other than the Hulk, to to pop up every now and then. Yeah. Um, in the MCU, so I I imagine that he will show up in this series somehow. I won't be surprised if they turn him into the Red Hulk in this. In this? So, yeah. I mean, not right away, but I wouldn't be surprised if they turn him into the Red Hulk. Shit, why not? That'd be a good season ender right there. I'll be yeah. honest. Um, I think that covers it. Um, you know, our show usually runs an hour, and now we've gone 40 minutes on Marvel. Um, so I'm going to have some, some editing to do. Uh, again, in a couple minutes, when it switches out and Travis's shirt changes and his beard goes away, and <laughs> my shirt might not change because this is all I ever wear. You wonder uh, why Travis? Why Travis suddenly has no has no beard? <laughs> it's, it's because... We should have done this the other way around, so it looked like you were growing a beard really quickly, oh, not should've. shaving uh, right. in between. But we appreciate you guys understanding. Uh, sorry for the little technical glitch here, um, but we will. Uh, I, wow, I don't know how to end this because usually I'm ending, but you're going to watch the rest of the show now. So um, on to Star Wars, and thank you guys very much. I don't know. I, I need to know. I'm not exactly sure when the series is set. Like, do we know exactly? I mean, because I feel like he could be coming back, not in flashback, but as somebody that Obi-Wan sees and visions and talks to, you know, just kind of like, you know what I mean? Kind of yeah. like someone he, he is like... Like Kylo, what, he, like he sees young Anakin Skywalker, or human yeah. Anakin Skywalker as Darth Vader? Yeah, something like that. I feel like he can come back in that, and we don't know what capacity he's coming back in. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to be, like, back for, like, one episode, or he's going to come back for the whole thing. Right. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're 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 not telling us everything for a reason, and that's fine. I don't want to know everything, but I don't. I don't feel like he's coming back to be like a regular cast member, and he's going to be there all the time. He's like, he's going to be in the suit and the helmet and all that kind of crap. Right. I don't think that's happening. Um, he's not pulling him. I, I feel out. like he'll still be. I feel like Obi Wan will be haunted by that fight, that last fight they had, and oh, yeah. that split, and that, and he'll he'll be seeing visions of Anakin and maybe yeah. even conversing with with with. The, the Anakin that he sees, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what we could be seeing out of this. I just, I, I don't know where they're going to go. I just, I, I hope it's flashbacks. I'm, I'll, I'm hedging on my bets on flashbacks for this show because the whole point of Obi-Wan Kenobi's journey is that he sacrificed everything he knew and everything he loved and, and everything that was left to go be a hermit in the desert and watch over young Luke. And if he's out there having adventures every other day, then it, it's not, you know, yeah. I don't say it doesn't I'm not exactly much. sure. I'm not excited for this series, by the way. I know a lot of people are. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not really either at this point. If it's if it's flashbacks to Clone Wars, I'm 100 percent in. That's what I'm saying. I could go either way on it. If yeah. but they're already I, I treading on that too much with Darth Maul going out there to fight him in Rebels. Um, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I I don't feel like this is territory that needs to be revisited. Right. I don't feel like it was territory that ever needed to be clarified. Like yeah, I, I was I was content. To sit there and just think that he's he, he was over there and he was watching over Luke, even though the even if you think about that for more than five minutes doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but but I mean but it's just I don't need I don't need this territory explained. I, I think it's probably better best left alone. Yeah. Uh, but they're going they're going with it and you know we'll see what happens. Yeah. I feel, I feel like the more they mess around in this in this particular time period. The better, the better the chance of them fucking some shit up. It's like if they have a Yoda series and you find out that Yoda, Yoda was taking vacations to Kashyyyk to visit the, his Wookiee buddies every other right. year to have adventures. But right, um, Rangers... like there's that like there's that one episode where Yoda hangs out with the with the Ewoks. Yeah, and you know, and they get <laughs> and they and they and they, they they steal an Imperial cruiser and right. they go off on a joyride, and you're like. This doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, so um, something's wrong there. <laughs> oh, man. The one I, I am super, super excited about, um, there's yeah. there's three more shows to talk about. Ahsoka. No. Well, yeah, but no, Andor. I, I think that has the most potential for an amazing show. Um, you know, uh, Diego Luna played Cassie Andor in Rogue One, uh, which was, uh, I, I, by 
by and large, a lot of people's favorite Star Wars movie, and, and up to this day, I think one of the most rewatchable of all the uh, series. Um, yep. Unfortunately, it was a one and done for obvious reasons, but you know the thing that changed my mind about what I was going to see when I was watching Rogue One is a scene where Cassian Andor has to smoke one of his rebel informants so he can get away. The guy's getting ready to freak out because stormtroopers are coming, and he does something a good guy doesn't do, but guess what? In the real world, or in this case, a galaxy far, far away, good guys aren't black and white. You know, everything shades of gray. You know, good guys do bad things. I thought that was the whole point of Rogue One is saying, hey, you know, we're doing what we have to to get the job done. You know, there's a greater good that we're going for. And yeah. that combined, combined with, like, a spy thriller type show, um, yeah. combined with Diego Luna, I think has got everything it needs to be amazing. Yeah, I agree. I'm hoping they can find a way to well, I guess they probably couldn't find a way to get Felicity Jones' character in there, but I really want to see her again. I really want to see Jen Erso back yeah. again in but some way. Doesn't that fall into the Obi Wan? Well, you know, I you know what you're right because she did have they they hinted at she had some adventures in the middle there, right after she left Saul Guerrero. So yeah, they I mean, could certainly do that. Yeah, um, there's stuff they could do with her. Yep, and we've got a, a neat little kind of behind the scenes, not so much a teaser, or not so much a trailer, but more of a teaser, some behind the scenes footage and look at. Um, Look at some conceptual drawings on the site, uh, punchdrunkcritics.com right now, so check that out. Uh, Rangers of the New Republic. Uh, yeah, which... so the, other, the next two shows are Mandalorian spinoffs, mm -hmm. um, and they're both going to be they're going to be done by, or at least overseen by John Favreau and Dave Filoni, which as Mandalorian spinoffs is what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also going to be uh, kind of connected to the Mandalorian in a way, or at least developed parallel to it mm -hmm. so we could be seeing at least i'm i'm saying i'm thinking we could see some maybe larger story arcs that kind of cross over between these shows but yeah. of course ahsoka is one mm -hmm. with rosario dawson's ahsoka tano which everybody has, has has suspected she was going to get her own show right um and it looks like she is so yay for that nobody i don't think anybody can complain about an ahsoka tano show no i mean especially uh, after that episode a couple weeks ago I mean, it, before that, I would have had some reservation, but after seeing her live action, you know, everything, the personality, the action, the look, everything was perfect. So I don't see any yeah. reason not to. And she's obviously doing cool work, you know, right? She's going in and taking care of, of tyranny across the galaxy. Yeah. So there's that. Um, she'll probably be picking up on, in, in the episode of The Mandalorian, we saw that she was looking, she was looking for General Thawne, Grand mm -hmm. Admiral Thrawn, so... I imagine that story will pick up on her show. On her show, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine we'll see Ezra Bridger on that show at some point too. I, I kept thinking for a while that we would see Ezra Bridger show up on The Mandalorian, but now it makes more sense for him to show up on an Ahsoka show. Um, I don't know about that. I think our season finale is going to see uh, Ezra Bridger showing back up in the last shot, and that'll lead to next season, which will have the first episode will be the premiere along with the Ahsoka lead-in episode. I will take that bet. So you think next week, you think this upcoming week, we're going to see Ezra Bridger? Um, well, no, because we got two episodes left, right? No, we got one. It's coming up. It's the finale. Finale is on the 18th. Show them out. No, I take my bet back. <laughs> I am so distraught right now, I don't even have words. I thought I had two episodes left. <laughs> nah. All right, but my idea is still cool. I don't care. I didn't say the idea wasn't cool. I was just like, are you sure? I was like, are you sure? <laughs> no, no, I'm not sure. Hell, I'm not even sure if we're going to get Grogu back by the end of the year now. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But they got a hell of a squad. Uh, yeah. The other show is um, Rangers of the Republic. Now, they didn't give us any real details on this, but it sounds like a Cara Dune show. Yes. That's what it sounds like. And I, look, I'm just going to say, if Gina Carano is looking like she was looking in this most recent episode... I'm going to watch this show <laughs> super hardcore. Note that down, folks. <laughs> look, the I've next time Travis gives thing. me shit about saying something like that, look, remember this look, moment. I've <laughs> always had a thing with Gina Carano, even before she did Haywire. Yeah, oh yeah. But I mean, this, but it was that show, UFC weigh-in that got me. The UFC weigh-in. I, I, on The Mandalorian, as Cara Dune, she's looking especially fine. The only thing she hasn't especially, done. Especially, especially powerful. Yes. Especially thick. I love yes. it. Yeah, it's it yeah. Um she just hasn't done her signature lip bite. That thing I don't know what it is. No, she, just she doesn't need to do that. 
She doesn't need to do that. It needs to happen. Needs to that is car. She doesn't. It doesn't seem like a car thing to do. I but. don't care. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, go yeah. back and watch something else. So we're, we're seeing we're seeing the uh, the seeds of that there. Obviously, in the last episode of Mandalorian, she we, we found out she accepted her position of uh, or two episodes ago, I guess at this point, we accepted her posi- position as a um, like a, a marshal, uh, a cop, basically for the New Republic, um, and this looks to be. Her show, I, I I can't imagine what the plot line's gonna be or what the setup's gonna be. Is it gonna? It's not gonna be a cop style show, obviously, but it. I don't know. It could be. I mean, not a procedural type show, but but maybe like I don't know. Uh, her leading a team of a team of marshals. Yeah. Uh, taking on like you know, street level threats, I guess. Whatever, wherever Gangsters, she's at. The huts I mean, she might that, not yeah. even be the lead. She might not even be the lead of this show. It might be more of an ensemble. We really don't know. I mean, it is called Rangers of the Republic, right? So it might not even really be her show. It should just be a part of it. Well, that's only they only called it that because Dune had certain legal problems to title it Dune, um, so they didn't do that. Um, yeah. So that wraps up the. What are we missing? We got six Star Wars shows. They announced ten things. Oh, one quick thing we didn't uh, mention before uh, was that in the Marvel side of things yeah. is that Guardians of the Galaxy is getting a holiday special. Um, so that should be fun in 2022, right before the uh, release of Volume 3. But we're missing some Star Wars info here. Well, okay. So there's <clears throat> so there's the Lando Calrissian series. Forgot that one. Yep. That's coming up. And that's going to be done by Justin Simeon, the guy who did Dear White People and Van Hare. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we're going to see a show that is going to deal with race in the Star Wars universe. You can guarantee that. Mm-hmm. Which I think is fascinating because that's something that they've never really tackled. Is there racism in the Star Wars universe? I <laughs> mean, they actually Of have... course there is! Yeah, oh yeah, they, they tackled it. I mean, it was in the... I guess it was in the expanded universe, but... Um... It's it's plain in the original trilogy movies is that the Empire was was horribly racist. If you look, that's why you don't see any aliens. If you look at the Rebels versus the Imperials, the Imperials only had white British people on all their ships, white British men at that. Um, but then uh, if you look at the uh, the Rebel Alliance, obviously those weren't the only ones that could pilot ships. The Mon Calamari were there. You know, you had you had a uh, a diverse group of people for the Rebel Alliance. So even back in George Lucas's first time at bat. Um, it, it was showing the racism, uh, racism bad thing right there. You know, the, the bad guys, the Imperials, had all homogenous people, whereas the rebels were a, a group of people. So, I mean, there's a lot to explore there. I mean, how you, and it, how, how you do it is, is going to be interesting. Uh, you know, is it, is it a species? Is it speciesism? I guess, if that's a word. Or, or is it, is, is there racism in between species in Star Wars? How does that happen, you know? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. I'm also fascinated at the, at the possibility of Donald Glover coming back as Lando. We don't know. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't know yet whether or not that's the case. I think everybody assumes Donald Glover is coming back as Lando because everybody wants to see him in the cape again. And they know um, he's got an affinity for these things, so they think he will. Right. But... Right. I mean, um, that might even might not even be the part, the, the the point of the series. I mean, mm-hmm. it might it might be a a, a Lando who's older than that. We don't know. Uh, we really have no idea. But I think everybody, if everybody had to had their vote, it would be a show that has the Donald Glover Lando. Well, and I think I think the cool it they'd be so stupid to not do this. I mean, the the thing that everybody's suggesting, the buzz is all about right now, is that you bring in both Landos, you have the series, um, almost like Tales from the Crypt or, or Creep Show bookended. By old Lando sitting at a Sabacc table telling stories of his old adventures. And it cuts back to Donald Glover actually doing them. Mm. Um, it might be a little cheesy depending on how they do it. But, I, I mean, you got to – you have both of them available at least for, for now. Uh, so you got to do that. I think the one I forgot about that I was actually the second most excited about is uh, The Acolyte, which right. takes us to that um, that time. I, I kind of thought this was good. But just based off the uh, title, I thought this – there was uh, – a. A series of books that came out before the Last Jedi that dealt with, um, you know, things that were going on around that time in the galaxy. One of the coolest things that never really got dived into was the cult of Vader, where there was like a bunch of people that were, 
that worship Darth Vader and were trying to, you know, learn Darth Sides. They had a whole cultish thing to it. It's really awesome. That's not what this is, though. This is um, taking us back to the final days of that High Republic era that I talked about that, um, that Lucasfilm's really going to start focusing on uh, and into, I guess, the rising of the dark side. This is this is the series that we we learned about months ago from uh, Leslie Headland. She's uh, she's the one who did uh, the Netflix series Russian Doll. Uh, she did that movie Bachelorette. This is the moment we did that day. They were kind of keeping secret. Um, we learned it just I think in the past week or two that it's going to have martial arts elements to it. Um, they're describing it as a mystery thriller, which a mystery thriller set in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, sure, I want that. Mm-hmm. Um, with martial arts elements too, sure, yeah, um, I want that. Um, and yeah, like you said, set during the High Republic uh, era. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for this one too um, because I don't, I, 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 I can't imagine what it is. Like, I can't, I don't have a formula for what it might be, which makes me excited for it. Yeah, uh, and it sounds like it's going to be characters I don't know, which right. also makes me excited for it. Yeah, uh, I mean, so I, the one thing I need from Star Wars is another to be new and new shit with new characters. Right. <laughs> yeah, I so. mean, because it is an entire galaxy, and so far we've met like seven people. So, um, pretty much. And then following that, it, it seems if, if you don't think Disney's a company, just look at these announcements. Everything's so perfectly structured and laid out, and it's it's just like perfect on both sides. You know, Marvel, you got all this stuff, and then you have I Am Groot, the cute little animated short. Star Wars, you got all the Star Wars stuff that's awesome, and then you have. A Star Wars, was it Droids? A Droid Story. A uh, Droid Story. Joint yeah. series from Lucasfilm Animation and ILM described as an epic journey, which will introduce us to a new hero guided by R2 and 3PO. Um, I, see, I, so, already, I already know I don't want to watch that show. Right, but Tony Daniels got more work, and I think that's awesome. That, that, yeah, that's great. I, I love that, but mm-hmm. yeah. Unless they, unless they, there's some hook that I don't know of that they haven't announced yet, like this droid is secretly an Imperial droid. I wouldn't even uh, care then, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, wait. <laughs> and and little do C three C three PO and R two D two know he's he's uh, on a mission to to kill <laughs> to kill Princess Leia or something like that. Right. Yeah, unless everyone tell me something like that, there's very little chance I'll be very interested in this. But then again, who knows? Who knows? It, I do. It's not going to be for me. Um, <laughs> I I, just, I never liked the droid stuff. I mean, they're great for side characters, but I just never even even the episodes of Rebels. And, I don't want to and, watch a full show about the droids. No. Um, I don't. Oh, one thing I can't believe we left out was um, you know they did announce that Chadwick Boseman's role uh, as T'Challa will not be recast uh, in Marvel. Yeah. Just trying up some loose ends there. Uh, no details on how they're going to cover that, but just that he wouldn't be recast. Um, that would have been a horrible mistake. But... Was to recast him. Yes. I, I, I don't think, I mean, that's, you can't, you can't do that and you can't use CG. I don't, I don't, the CG thing, I, I think to, to, to tie up something, I don't think would be so bad. I, I wouldn't really be against that as long as, you know, you were paying their family or something like that. You're not just ruining their legacy and, and using their image, but. I mean, we've had this conversation about what to do about Chadwick Boseman and yeah, yeah. Do before. Um, this is just confirmation that they won't be recasting them. So, uh, right. good good idea. And um, then, they might want to recast Shuri, though. You see all this stuff that was going on with her the other day? That shit was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious, and it was so disappointing. Because it's just, with it's just, Ray, it's just sad and ridiculous. It's just sad and ridiculous. It's like, yeah. don't go out there and spread a bunch of anti-vaxxer crap right now. And Well, Travis, they're going to track us. The government's going to track us. With the vaccine, even though we carry these things, oh my God, she's day. just—you oh, know, she, she's she's thinking for, she's thinking for herself, so you know she's better than us. It's like you're not you're not making sure you seem all that smart. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if anything, that just proves what a talented actress she is, because she can play a convincingly she's not, brilliant scientist. I'm sure, she's not an idiot in real life, but she's no. just she's like so many others who who have been duped gaslighted or whatever they're calling it yeah. um so outside um, of star wars and marvel two other big announcements um uh, one we've been hearing about forever is indiana jones 5 is is confirmed it'll be the end of the line for that we didn't Indy. know yeah we didn't know that we did know. i mean we, we kind of did that. know because um you know harrison ford's 97 years old now um he's basically yeah. mr burns at this point I, so. I feel like they've been trying to tell us that for a while because 
Harrison Ford, you know, I, I, as someone who's written about every stupid development with Indiana Jones Five for the last mm-hmm. ten years, um, he's 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 always made a point of saying no one else can be Indiana Jones. And there and then there was another producer on the on the movie too, um, who's who said the same thing basically mm-hmm. that no one else will be Indiana Jones. And at the time, you know, we kind of like took it as yeah, ha ha ha, whatever. Uh, Chris Pratt would be Indiana Jones someday, you know, mm-hmm. or or they'll reboot it and whoever else will be, whoever's hot at the moment will be Indiana Jones someday, you know. And we kind of just took it that way. Or right. or some or some people just thought they would recast him the way you would recast James Bond. Right. Um, but uh, and but now they're saying no. This is the fifth and final movie. Um, again, everything I just said could still stand, <laughs> and because it's not as if the property dies. Yeah. Uh, it's because they say right now they're not doing another movie. You think Disney won't find a way to still use the Indiana Jones brand? Of course they will. Yeah. <laughs> of course they will. I gotta sit there and hold on to that forever. You must be out of your mind. Yeah. So, but at least for now, they're saying this next one's the, the last one, uh, you know, which, uh, you know what, great. They've been having so many issues getting this movie just going. They can't figure out a script. They've had so many issues that Steven fucking Spielberg left. Yeah. I mean, you know how much it would have to, how much trouble it would have to take for Steven Spielberg to leave Indiana Jones? That should to be a not sign. Dire- to not direct an Indiana Jones movie? He's on there as producer, but he's done all of them. He, he, it's, it's it's one of his babies. The thing is, one it's of the not things hard. that he'll always be known for, and he's like, "Yeah, I, I, I'm going to wash my hands of this." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, it's not hard if you recast Indy. I mean, it, it's hard to make a convincing archaeological adventure movie with a 97 year old man. Uh, it doesn't make sense. But Harrison Ford, you know, I, I'm really <clears> surprised <throat> that he doesn't want to let go of it because. He's been so famously nonchalant and blasé about all his characters. You know, he want, wanted Han Solo to die in Empire. You know, he just doesn't seem to care all that much about most of this stuff. So well, yeah, Harry, Harrison Ford can afford to not care. Well, right, but so why, why not just say, okay, you know, you know what you need for Indiana Jones? You just need a mystery, a historical mystery. We've got ten thousand years of them to go through. Indiana Jones and the Search for Atlantis. Indiana Jones and King Tut's tomb. Indiana Jones and you know somebody's virginity i don't i don't know um you have 10 million things you can do it's not a tough story the problem is they're treating indiana jones as a linear storytelling mechanism and not as a james bond style thing i think if they go it was originally pictured as a serialized as an homage to serialized movies go that way make it serialized throw chris pratt or whoever in the role and just make each one the same way that um temple of doom and raiders were which is they were really not connected other than the main character did I just hear a child? I have two of them. Yes, they're not are loose. They like, they're in their cage. Are they in? The, are they in the room? No, no, they're out in the other room. <laughs> okay, I heard a child in, on, on your side coming from your side of the screen. So yeah, it's when we hear it from your side of the screen that we have to be nervous. <laughs> yeah, you should be nervous. <laughs> you wouldn't be more nervous than me. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, mean, I can understand why this would be a hard, a hard film to write. Um, it, like it or not, Indiana Jones isn't just some other movie. You can't. I, I've always, I've often compared it to National Treasure. Like you could just make another National Treasure, but no, you couldn't. Uh, it needs to be ten times better than a National Treasure movie. <laughs> it's yeah. Indiana. So and you got and you got to make it. I mean, it, it, that's going to be hard to mm. live up to because you you need it to live up to the heights of Raiders of the Lost Ark and Last Crusade. And even though I don't think Raiders of the Lost Ark is that great, I, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the Temple second one. Temple of, Temple of Doom is that great. It's still pretty good. Yeah. Um, because when you don't make a movie that's on their level, you get Crystal Skull. And that's what and sucks. Crystal Skull sucks. And mm-hmm. that's why I was worried when they kept bringing back David Kep to write this one. Because David Kep wrote Crystal Skull. And they brought David Kep back twice to write this one. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, that doesn't make, that doesn't make me feel better. Right. I mean, James Mangold is on there now as a director and he's going to over oversee the script or at least take another pass at it um but this has obviously been a very difficult movie for them to make mm-hmm. and i'm i'm not at all confident in it <laughs> no the thing is it's, it's very 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 rare for a movie to have this many issues and come out 
smelling like a rose or being as anywhere near iconic as the stuff of the past. And if you add on top of that an unconvincing Indiana Jones, I don't see Harrison Ford who's still flying airplanes doing all this stuff. I don't see him taking <laughs> how back can seat. he be and how can he be unconvincing as Indiana Jones? He is Indiana Jones. I okay, so he can be unconvincing as an active <laughs> Indiana Jones. It could he be convincing if it was a two and a half hour movie about him teaching archaeology? Sure. Um, but him him actually going on the adventures, that's the unconvincing part. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so we are actually over an hour now. We have one more yes. story I wanted to get to. Uh, something you wrote about uh, that I, I want to hear uh, your take on. Noah Hawley's got an alien series happening at FX. Now, it's on Hulu. I don't understand the FX Hulu thing because I've watched shows that were FX shows on Hulu, and they've had, like, boobies and, um, and cuss words in them. But FX is a cable sh- channel still, right? So can they have a lot of violence? Is, is, or is it censored? Is it different on Hulu than it is on broadcast? I don't know. That's right. my answer. <laughs> so what's what's up with the I, I, I have Hulu and I don't really know. So. Um, yeah. yeah, so this is a alien series from Noah Hawley. He's been talking about this for a while. In fact, it was barely maybe a week or two ago that he was saying that he didn't think it was going to happen. Mm. Uh, he may have been, you know, pulling our leg. Right. Um, or this was something that had developed in just the last couple of days, the last few days. That's possible too. Right. Um, but it's a series is going to be set on Earth. And it's, it, I think it's mainly going to be dealing with people more so than xenomorphs. But uh, obviously there will be some That's sort awesome. of xenomorph presence uh, in this somehow. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not – well, really, Scott is on here as, a, as an executive producer as well, of course. Of course he would be. Right. Um, I don't I'm, – I, I'll be honest. I, I'm not super excited for it yet. Mm-hmm. They're going to – it's going to take – some casting news or something to make me excited for it. Yeah, uh, or at least a plot line. I think, yeah, I think in general, if this show were to just happen, I wouldn't watch it. Mm-hmm. Like, I probably just wouldn't watch it. Um, even, even stuff that I'm interested in, like on the big screen, when they get brought to the small screen, I don't always take an interest. Like a show like, like I've had zero interest in any of Noah Hawley's shows. Like, I didn't even watch Legion. And Legion's I never watched it either. Legion's freaking X Men related, mm-hmm. and I still didn't watch it. I had no interest in it. I didn't watch. I didn't watch Fargo, and no matter how much praise it has been heaped on it, I've had no interest in it. Every time I've looked at it, mm-hmm. um, I have a feeling I'll probably have no interest in this too because it's no Holly. Yeah, <laughs> there's something. There's something about his work. I don't know what it is. So maybe it's his name. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> something. Something has made me not. Interested Damn, I hate Noah's. Always building their boats and. Surviving yeah. floods and shit. He made a shitty movie too. He made uh, he made that movie with uh, with uh, uh, Lucy in the Sky, which is shitty. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, so I just don't. Look, I, the, I've, yet, I've yet to find the thing from him that that gets me interested. And Aliens, at least as it stands right now, is not it. If you ask me, Alien is a short form action film in bursts only. Um, the only way you get away with doing a show is if you do Band of Brothers with aliens instead of Germans. That's the only way I want to see that. Cause I mean, one of the most, compa- I mean, aliens, the second movie is, is far and away my favorite of the series. Ooh. Um, and, well, and if you're going to do a show about aliens and it's going to be set on earth and it's going to deal with humans, you're going to get a, a dark paranoid thriller with a lot of government conspiracy kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's what it's going to be. That's, that's why gonna I be. want it's going to be, it's going to be Paul Reiser's character. Um, you know, stuff like that. Right, so that's it's awesome. You works. take the least interesting parts of the movie and you make them no longer. Oh, um, Richard was freaking great in that movie, and that character was great. He was. Um, I don't want to see ten episodes of him. He was good great, for the ten percent of the screen time he got. He's a great component to the overall story. Is he? Do I want to watch a whole series of shady government conspiracies uh, about aliens? No. I don't know how they don't know how the execs don't get this. It's no. if. It's a bait and switch if you do that. You know, people think aliens, they think, shocker, aliens. I'm saying if you do a Band of Brothers style show where the first episode is like a Starship Troopers type deal where they're getting ready on Earth and then they mount up and they go off to a Xeno planet to, and drop off and there's some big war. There's the whole thing over a 10 episode arc. I'm in. Other than that, I'm good. Um, so there's a bunch more news that we are not going to get to today. Um, everything from um, a, a new 
Buzz Lightyear origin film starring Chris Evans um, to Chippendale's Rescue Rangers and all kinds of other stuff that's that's come out over the last few days. You can check all of that out on our website, www.punchdrunkcritics.com. We are updating regularly every single day, so make sure to bookmark the page and check it out as much as you can. We also have a review for The Mandalorian, Season 2, Episode 7, The Believer, uh, which is up no, now. One more. One more left to go. I'm so pissed off about that. Um, thank you, you know how hard it is to day. watch that show at 3 in the morning and then have I didn't have the the recap up by like five. I don't. I don't. <laughs> like five in the morning. I have no idea. You know, how, you know how furiously I'm working. It sucks. I yeah. Uh, and I and I did this one in the middle of trying to get all the Disney stuff that I dropped. Better man than so me. I took a I took a break from the Disney stuff for like an hour and a half mm. to watch the Mandalorian and then do the recap and then I went right back to work. I was like, God, this sucks. This yeah. Sucks. That's terrible. <laughs> if you want to get all of the information um, as it comes through, um, instead of checking the bookmark every five minutes, you can go to Twitter. Um, we are at PDC Movies, at Punchy Critic, and at Punch Drunk John. On Twitch, you can check out Travis at Cinematic underscore Enforcer. If you have any tips or questions, anything you want to talk to us about, info at PunchDrunkCritics.com. Until next time, folks, I'm John. I'm Travis. I'm about to fall asleep. We are Punch Thanks. Drunk Critics, and we are out of here. Later, guys. Later.